Larry is a hardened and determined sexual predator. I know this firsthand. His ability to gain my trust and the trust of my parents, his grooming and carefully calculated brazen sexual assault was the result of deliberate, premeditated, intentional, and methodological patterns of abuse, patterns that were rehearsed long before I walked through Larry's exam room door and which continued to be perpetrated, I believe, on a daily basis for 16 more years until I filed the police report. And while Larry is unlikely to live past his federal sentence, he is not the only predator out there. And this sentence will send a message about how seriously abuse will be taken. So I ask, how much is a little girl worth? How much priority should be placed on communicating that the fullest weight of the law will be used to protect another innocent child from the soul-shattering devastation that sexual assault brings? Larry meticulously groomed me for the purpose of exploiting me for his sexual gain. He penetrated me, he groped me, he fondled me, and then he whispered questions about how it felt. He engaged in degrading and humiliating sex acts without my consent or permission. And Larry enjoyed it. Larry sought out and took pleasure in little girls and women being sexually injured and violated. MSU, we have been telling our stories for more than 18 months, and you have yet to answer a single question I have asked. Every time I repeat these facts about the number of women who reported to employees at MSU and were silenced, you respond the exact same way. You issue a press statement saying there was no cover-up because no one who heard the reports of assault believed that Larry was committing abuse. You play word games saying you didn't know because no one believed. I know that. And the reason everyone who heard about Larry's abuse did not believe it is because they did not listen. They did not listen in 1997 or 1998 or 1999 or 2000 or 2004 or 2014. No one knew, according to your definition of no, because no one handled the reports of abuse properly. Victims were silenced intimidated, repeatedly told it was medical treatment, and even forced to go back for continued sexual assault. I was subjected to lies and attacks on my character, including very publicly by attorney Shannon Smith when I testified under oath. I was being attacked for wanting fame and attention, for making up a story to try to get money. And Your Honor, since these attacks were made on my character, very publicly, on public record, I would like to take an opportunity briefly now to correct them. You may proceed. Thank you. Out of the two women in question that day, Ms. Smith and I, who were attempting to communicate through either questions or answers, I would like to note that only one of us was taking pictures of the courtroom on her cell phone. Only one of us posed for the press and said, quote, I feel like I should say cheese. And out of the two of us, only one of us was making money off her court appearance that day. I don't feel the need to say anything else. I think I've communicated clearly. Your Honor.